Okay, guys, welcome to part two. So now I have to start thinking about what do I want this sign to actually look like. Well, this looks kind of plain. I don't know, just just a hammer. And what I think I'm going to do is maybe I could rotate this and mirror it to make more of like a logo. So I'm going to take this hammer and once again, if I click on it, I can see it's a close curve. So I'm going to um, rotate this down with the rotate tool. So I'm going to click on it. It says center of rotation. I'll just uh, I'll turn off my near snap and my endpoint snap here. I'll go right about here. Angle or first reference point is just a handle. I'm just going to go right over here. I'll rotate it down, I guess maybe to like about like 45 degrees or so. Now I'm going to take this hammer. I want an identical one mirrored across here. So I'm going to click on move and go to mirror. And it says start of mirror plane. Okay, I'm just going to I guess eye out right up, right about here. And then hold down shift, which will, if I don't hold down shift, it's going to be a crooked mirror. They're not going to be symmetrical. If I hold down shift, it engages ortho down here. And I actually think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I need to, um, I could leave this and the tool will carve all the way down here and all the way down here, but I'm going to trim it just to keep it clean. So I start trim, cutting objects is one hammer, enter, select objects to trim. Again, I'm always just reading the command line up here, trimming these two lines here, press enter when done. And then I'll right click to repeat the trim command. Cutting objects is these two curves, enter, objects to trim are these and these, enter. And then I'll join the hammers together. So they are back to one closed curve, four curves joined into one closed curve. All right, that's good. Okay. Um, looks a little bit large, so I'm going to take it and, um, well, actually I'll, I'll start the scale 3d command. You can, you can work by selecting the object and then applying the command, or you could start the command and let the command ask you what objects do you want to scale? So this command right here is scale 3d. So it's going to scale it across the X, Y, and Z. I want to scale these hammers here. What's the origin point? I'll just ballpark the middle. What's my scale factor, my handle? Anywhere, just make it bigger. And I could just kind of shrink it down a little bit. So I'll say maybe about like, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, all right. So now let me, um, let me think about the size of the sign that I want. I mean, I could definitely fit this in a 12 by 12. But let's say that I, I had to, my client or the space I have has to be um, 11 inches. So I'm going to go back to my original layer default. I'm going to call this stock and I'm going to activate it and I'll turn my ortho and my grid snap on. I'm going to make a, a rectangle representing an 11 by 11 sign. So now I have some space that I know I have to fit this into. So I want to center this and centering, I have my own method of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer and I'll call it center lines. I'll make it a nice bright green and I'll activate it. So what I'll do is I'm going to make a line from, I'll do a, uh, a near snap up here to about the, the tallest part of the hammer all the way down to, let's say, the shortest part of the hammer. I'll take my grid snap off, say right about here. And now what I could do is make a line from the middle of the stock to the middle of the stock. And if I were to move, I'm going to start the move command, move the hammers and this line. And I wanted to move it from its middle to the near. Now it is centered up and down. Okay, so here I have one 
and we'll say about five eighths of an inch here. And then here I have one and five eighths of an inch here. Okay, so that's left that's up and down centering. Now for left and right, I can take a line and I'll do from end to end. Actually, I'll go straight up here. This is and I'm gonna move this, let's see this, move this hammer and this. And I'll move it from its intersection snap to the middle of this line. So where is the middle of this line? That's going to be at five and a half right there. Uh, all right. Okay, so it was a little complicated. There's a, I'm sure there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but I, I, I did it two, in two steps. Um, so... If I hide this layer here, now you can see that I have my hammers. They're away from the borders. I would say this is as close as you want to get to the border. Um, it's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. I think a quarter is safe, but this will do. Okay. Um, and now I can start thinking, all right, how do I like this sign? It, it looks good. Maybe I want to add some text under here. So, you know what? Maybe I'll just drag this up with ortho to leave some room for some text underneath and i'll activate the text tool and i want to make my curve as a te uh, my text as curves i want to group the objects i'm going to estimate that i think i want the text height to be 1.5 inches and i'll say uh let's call it Let's do that, okay, for a door sign. And I could change the font, so I can experiment with all different types of fonts right here. Um, you could go italic, okay. So let's do, I'll just do maybe that one, okay. You could download fonts and install them. All right, so here's the text. It's way too big. Again, we're going to do a scale 3D and scale it down. And again, you can spend some time to center it left and right, up and down. I'm going to take my midpoint snap off and I'll bring it over. Or you could just count boxes. I have two boxes here. I have less than one box here. So I'll just drag it over a little bit for like one and a half, one and a half. That looks good too. So you can eye out the centering. You could do it exact. Just make it look good. Okay. I'm going to save this. So file, save as. And I'm going to save this under my uh, 2020 hammer sign. And I'll call it hammer sign. Whoops. Okay, and then now we're going to open up uh, RhinoCam. So I'm going to go to RhinoCam and Mill. Okay, so I'm going to end this video and do the rest in part three.